come back at you again with a brand new episode of our MLB Show 20 Philly Phillies franchise mode featuring the Philly Phillies. And I've come to realize, guys, that a lot of you are still watching this series, that this is one of my most viewed series on YouTube currently. I think a couple episodes ago, the Damon Jones MLB debut episode got about 45 something odd views. The Evan White one got close to 100. I mean, I'm probably over exaggerating like 45 to close to 100. Uh, but we are up in the series. You know, 13 of 5 was a game 1 victory, and 7 to 3 was a game 2 victory in the sim. So you gotta love that. You really do gotta love that. You gotta love, you know, the content we're playing. I gotta love all the support we're getting. You know, we're going up subscribers. It seems like every day. Every other day we're getting a lot of subscriber or two to the channel, to the franchise family. I mean, we're 65 episodes deep in this series, and we, we're we just cruising along. We're just doing the best we can with this series, and we're having the most fun possible. And I totally exaggerate how many views we got on the Damon Jones and the Evan White. Damon Jones was 49, while Evan White was 37. For some reason, I thought we had a lot more views on the Evan White video than uh, originally predicted don't know how I got that messed up, but I, in fact, definitely did. The other side of Musita video got 43 views, so, I don't know. Don't know where I got, you know, almost 100 from. Could not honestly tell you, probably. <clears throat> but, yeah, Bryce Harper leading off the game. One, two count, and Harper will, in fact, strike out Kyle Hendricks, not Kyle Hendricks. That's going to be Braylon Marquez on the mound. Kyle Hendricks was the game one star. Got the lost late in that game. He was dealing for the most part. But JT there. Send him out to center field. I mean, center field just takes it off the nog and just boops him. But he's going to hold up at first. And Austin Meadows will follow that up with a strikeout. So two strikeouts in the inning for Marquez. JT's like, come on, guys. you got to hit me in. I'm pretty quick at this whole running thing. And then Hoskins goes down swinging for a strikeout. The side Braylon Marquez inning. All right, we see how it is. Zach Wheeler on the bump in 32 starts. He goes 13 7, 413 ERA. 196 innings pitched, a 138 whip, 179, uh, 79 walks, 188 strikeouts. So, Zach Wheeler definitely having a step back in production from his previous seasons with the Philadelphia Phillies. So, might be looking to have to consider some trade options for the veteran righty. Uh, but, you know, he got straight on that first inning. Now, Alec Boehm up and Boehm in his first at bat against Marquez. Draws himself a one-out walk. So, man on first base now for against the Cubs for the Phillies. Now, Bryson Stott tries to check his swing there. Does not matter. That will be called strike three. Now, taking a look at the playoff bracket, you see the Dodgers are up against the Mets. What a surprise. It's going to be hope, hope another Dodgers-Phillies, you know, NLCS. It's only been Dodgers Phillies the first three years of this franchise. Just saying that the Dodgers are very stacked. But there goes Kingery trotting down to first base as he draws himself to a walk. Now, Wheels goes down looking at a fastball down the gullet. Four strike three. Marquez gets out of a jam. Now, Kyle Schwarber up 2 1 count to the former first round draft pick catcher. And he's just in that one too. Deep center, uh, left center field for a no doubt home run. Kyle uh, Schwerber right there. His first of the game. Not sure about the series. Cubs bullpen is absolutely living out, living it out down there. They're you know singing and dancing and hollering and hooting and having a grand old time. You know, just a one nothing game. Phillies fan, nothing to worry about. We'll come back and get this dub. And Hap. You know, getting his strikeouts, uh, his strikes unsqueezed a bit. You know, not Joe Girardi, not thrilled with that ball call. Definitely a strike three situation. Zach Wheeler also physically not happy, throwing his hat around. Now one two count. Next batter up. That's gonna be Matt Adams, and Adams goes down via the punch out. So that's the should have been the final out of the inning. But I take on Brian Dozier now. And Dozier, you know, as Wheeler loses the slider right there, gets issued the walk. Second walk of the inning for. Zach Wheeler. Wheeler definitely needs to bear down, start, stop limiting base runners at this point. As he allowed three that inning. Now, Harper following up his first uh, inning at bat with another strikeout. JT up again. Hopefully he gets another base hit. No, not quite. Gets a walk this time, but he's been on every time so far on base in this game. So you gotta love to see that one right there for the good guys here in Philadelphia. 
Now, Bryson stops our Austin Meadows. Get that one down into center field for her a single. JT will advance to third base. And now, Zach Wood taking on David Bodie. And Bodie, again, getting his strike zone squeezed right there. And that's going to be the third walk issued by Zach Wheeler this game. Not even through three innings, and only three walks are allowed. Next batter up, Jason Hayward in the say hey kid. Goes down swinging for the first out of the inning. Now Frankie Lindor, and Lindor goes down that 98 mile an hour here. You know, up above the zone. Fourth punch of the game for Wheeler now. Adam Hazley taking on Marquez 3 2 count. And, you know, Hazley getting his strikes and extended. So, two Cubs batters get their strike zone shrunk. Now, a Phillies batter gets his strike zone extended as Alec Bohm, though, way outside this time, draws his second walk of the game. You know, putting a man on with one out. You know, we got to fight these bad umpires. You know, I don't want to turn on, you know, perfect play calling. But I just need them to be better. You know, these are definitely, like, some of these, you know, those pitches against, you know, the Cubs were strikes. That one's clearly a ball. And they both go the opposite way. Now, here we go, bottom four, and that will be a strikeout down the chute for Wilson Contreras. Contreras, you know, someone who's hurt, you know, the Phillies big time in the NLDS in the past couple of seasons. But goes down easy that time. Now, Matt Adams again, and Matt Adams goes down for the punch out to end off the fourth inning. So Phillies, a quiet inning on the hill for Zach Wheeler. Got himself a couple of strikeouts, but no runs or hits allowed. Top of the fifth. Guess who? Bryce Harper struck out. Harper throws his bat down. Anger, his third strike of the game. Ninth on the day total for Marquez. And here comes JT. And JT swings at the high fastball to end the inning. Ten punch outs on the day for Marquez. As he is having himself a heck of a postseason. Bottom five. There we go. Big strikeout for Brian Dozier. Last at bat. Got a walk this at bat. Did not. Now, Braylon Marquez, 3-2 count. Marquez swing out the fastball heater. There you go. Second punch out in a row for Wheeler. His eighth total on the day. Now, Reese Hoskins up in Hoskins. Does not miss that high fastball. You know, Marquez got a little risky right there. Runs into a right-handed batter who hits righties pretty well. Yeah, he hits them pretty, I'm sorry, lefties pretty well, not righties. You know, hits righties better than lefties, actually, Reese Hoskins does. But it does not matter that 88 power against lefties, or that, yeah, 80 power against lefties is all it needs to just send a no-tout shot to left field to tie this game up at one apiece here in Chicago. Get the replay that Hoskins admiring the home run ball as it's just going to clear that wall right there with no hesitation. How far up is that? That's going to be up in that, almost on the concourse behind you know, those bleacher seats. But Marquez Day officially done after allowing that home run. Definitely though, an early hook for Braylon Marquez, who has more or less held this Phillies lineup in check this game. So definitely a strange move by not David Ross, the manager for the Chicago Cubs. And it will come Adbert Alzola in two games. He has pitched three innings. He has allowed three runs. He has two strikeouts, two walks. Right is a batting 333 and left is a batting 286. So I couldn't really tell you what not David Ross was thinking because, well, uh, it's not, I don't think that's a great pitching move, but as soon as I say that, gets the strikeout right there. Now Alec Bohm up again, and Alec Bohm takes that one and sends that one. That curve right there, that kind of hung a little bit. It was a little low, but it's still more or less hung right in the wheelhouse of Alec Bohm. For a no-doubt shot to left field, 405 feet, 102.2 off of the bat. And you absolutely love to see that one right there. That is a game leading home run for Alec Bohm right there, giving the Phillies the one run lead here early in the game. I guess more on the midway point of this game. But nonetheless, you absolutely love to see that one right there. And guess that replay right there. Not super deep, not super hard hit, but still a good home run. Now, bomb six. The Jay Hay kid goes down swinging and yet again. His second shutout, ninth of the game for Zach Wheeler. Frankie Lindor, 1 1 count. And Lindor sends that one to right field. Getting a prompt to try and rob it. Jumping and not good enough. 
Frankie Lindor ties the game up at two apiece off of the Zach Wheeler fastball right there. You know, Lindor, who had struggled this series, I believe he came into this series with only one or two hits. Maybe even no hits, but the home run right there definitely changed things around for his series. But at the end of the inning, in comes Kyle Ryan for the Cubs in one game. He has an inning in the third. One strikeout, one walk, a lefty's batting 500 against him. And that's it for him. Now, Scotty K and Kingery draws himself a leadoff walk. Good for Scott Kingery right here, as he himself is now been on base twice this game, both the times being walks. So, heads up, fist bump by the first base coach. Now, Bryce Harper, 3 1 guy on Harper. Draws us off a two out walk. So after double play, we got ourselves a two out walk, and now we find ourselves back to more or less where we were, but no one scores, no one advances, and Diego Castillo comes in for the Phillies. In one game, he has a strikeout. Left is batting 100, or 1,000, Ray's batting 333. So, Matt Adams up, and Matt Adams takes this one to deep right field. That one's going in back, that one's high, and that one will curve around the foul pole. For a game leading home run right there. You absolutely hate to see that one. And then just kind of cut right there. So we, imp we uh, did put in this one right there. Look at this arc right Look how big this home run is. Absolutely mammoth shot right there. Went higher than Wrigley Field. So definitely not thrilled by that one as the Cubs had retaken a one run lead. But Brian Dozier does go down swinging right there. And in comes a pinch hitter for the Chicago Cubs. So. No at-bats for Kyle Ryan, unfortunately. But Franchi Cordero will come up, and he will go down swinging. Be the punch out right there. So now Tyler Olsen coming in for the Cubs, trying to lock this Phillies offense down. But Olsen here making his postseason debut for the 2022 season in 71 games. He had a pretty fairly okay season. Nothing to be disappointed at, nothing to be you know, ashamed of. A 261 ERA for Olsen as he strikes out Austin Meadows. But, and now comes Chris Sanchez for the Phillies, trying to hold the Cubs at bay. Keep this one run lead where it is. And Sanchez, just like Olsen, also making his 2022 postseason debut. And as he gets the first strikeout of the first batter he sees right here. So you always love to see that one from the hard-throwing lefty. Now, Frankie Lindor, 3-2 count. And Frankie goes down swinging the guys. She goes down looking on the changeup right there to end the inning. So, 1-2-3 inning, 4 Chris Sanchez. Now in comes Dan Winkler, the closer for the Cubs in 45 games. He had 51 saves. All right, Dan Winkler doing some uh, ooky spooky magic, but ooky spooky magic is gonna go right back at him with those you know fake inflated numbers. As Alec Bohm takes that middle in fastball and deposits that one to middle left field, <laughs> I guess left center field. Outfield stance. Home run for Alec Bohm. His second of the game. This one to tie up the game. At three apiece. With no outs in the inning. And well at the top of the owner coming up shortly thereafter him. But replay of this one right here. Now I see you celebrating in the dugout. Kind of phases through the bench. Who needs a bench? But replay there you go. That one's going to be. Kind of right center field, kind of far left center field. Or kind of right left field, kind of far left center field. I don't know how to say that one. But Dan, who had a big hair glitch earlier in the show 20, uh, had his hair fixed. But now, with one out, Scott Kingery goes up for the bunt. David Bodie cannot make the play in time. Had to buy a shooting error earlier in the series in game one, which led to a couple runs. But now you can't get the throw down. And Jorge Soler up in Soler. Pinch hit. Deposits that one into deep left field. The former Cubs prospect turns the tables on his former team. After setting the single season record for the Kansas City Royals in home runs a couple seasons ago. Let's see, four seasons ago in 2019. Hit 48 home runs with the Cubs. But now here in 2020, I'm sorry, the Royals, not the Cubs. In 2022 here with the Philadelphia Phillies, Jorge Soler is giving the Phillies a 5-3 lead against them in 
game three of the ALDS, a game in which they were losing until Alec Bohm tied it, and now Jorge Soler has the possibility of winning it officially for them. But Greg Kimberlin now, former Atlanta Braves closer in two games, he is a 20.25 ERA. So Kimbrell definitely has been off his A game in this series as he strikes out Bryce Harper. Harper now donning the golden sombrero right now. Uh, not a piece of hardware Harper probably wanted to wear going into this game. But following that one up, JT gets a walk. So JT is getting on base at a pretty high rate so far this postseason. A couple walks this game. But now Austin Meadows and Meadows. Not sure what he's swinging at that. That was ball two. But a strikeout right there to end the inning for Craig Kimbrell. As in comes Hector Harris, the Phillies closer. In one game, he has one save. And the third of an innings pitched, he's allowed one hit to one righty. That's it. Now, Kyle Schwarber goes down via the punch out on the splitter. One out in the inning. First shot of the game for Harris. Now, Ian Happ, one two count, and Happ goes down swinging via the splitter. Two outs, two strikeouts now in the inning. Wilson Contreras also goes down to be the splitter swinging. Striking out the side is Hector Naris to send the Phillies to the NLCS for the third year in a row. Getting some flashbacks here of the Phillies teams from 2008 to 2010, in which they made the NLCS for three years in a row. You know, they beat the, beat the Rays in the World Series, that one. They then lost to the Yankees the next year, and then they lost to the Giants in the NLCS in 2010. But besides that, the Phillies are probably, they're pro I don't know, they're a team that is definitely loving the new management here in Philadelphia. GM Chance Fisher has come in, promoted the right players, has made the right moves and trades, and well... The players we lost, the sacrifices we made, have done nothing but benefit this team in the long run. You know, Jamison Tyon was brought in. Zach Wheeler's still here. Bullpen help. But everything now is coming to fruition as the Phillies find themselves yet again in the NLCS. But if you enjoyed this episode, hit that like button. Comment down below your favorite part of the episode was. And text on YouTube, though. Peace out. Rock on. Super classy. Have a great day.